If you like our video, click the button to subscribe to our channel and get easy access to new content. To see our full suite of ad-free video courses, instruction manuals, and quick reference guides, visit us at www.teachucomp.com. If you are using QuickBooks to handle payroll and indicated that you have employees during the Easy Step interview, you can later set up payroll for your company file and then enter employees into the Employees tab in the Employee Center. The Employee Center allows you to handle all transactions that involve your employees in payroll. You can open the Employee Center by selecting Employees, Employee Center from the menu bar. To view the Employees tab within the center, click the tab at the left side of the window that says Employees. You can add, edit, and delete or inactivate employees in this list. To add a new employee to the list, click the New Employee button in the upper left corner of the Employee Center. Doing this then opens the New Employee window. The information within this window is divided into tabs shown along the left side of this window. The first tab shown by default when you open this window is called the Personal tab. In this tab, enter the employee's name into the Legal Name fields. Then enter their name as it should appear on Paychecks into the Print on Checks As field. Enter their Social Security Number into the Social Security Number field. You can enter their gender, date of birth, marital status, U.S. citizenship status, and ethnicity into the Gender, Date of Birth, Marital Status, U.S. Citizen, and Ethnicity fields. If needed, you can also enter information into the Disability, I-9 form, and Military sections at the right side of this tab. After finishing data entry on this tab, click the Address and Contact tab to continue. In the Address and Contact tab, you can enter the employee's home address information into the address, city, state, and zip fields available. You can then enter their main phone number into the Main Phone field. Then enter their primary email address into the Main Email field. You can then enter the employee information that you wish to record into the next six fields available. There are six data fields shown by default. However, for each field, you can select what data to record by choosing the name of a data field from the drop-down field labels shown. Then record the associated employee information within the adjacent data field to the right of each drop-down field label. The data fields shown by default are, from top to bottom and left to right, work phone, mobile, fax, CC email, website, and other one. Your choices of alternate fields for which you can substitute the default information are Home Phone, Alt Phone, Alt Mobile, Alt Fax, Alt Email 1, Alt Email 2, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, URL 1, URL 2, URL 3, URL 4, Skype ID, Other 2, and Other 3. In the Emergency Contact Info section, you can enter emergency contact information for the employee. Type the name of the employee's primary emergency contact into the primary contact field under the contact name column. Then enter the emergency phone number for that contact into the contact phone field to the right. Then use the relation drop-down to the right of that to select the relationship between the employee and the emergency contact. If the employee has a secondary emergency contact, enter that person's information into the next three fields for the secondary contact below the information for the primary contact. After entering the employee information you wish to record, click the Additional Info tab to continue. In the Additional Info tab, you can enter an employee ID number into the Account Number Employee ID field if needed. You can also enter any information into whatever custom fields you create for your employees into the Custom Fields section of this tab. To add custom fields to your customer, vendor, or employee lists to record information of your choosing, Please review the section on creating customized fields in a later lesson of this chapter. After you have finished the Additional Info tab, click the Payroll Info tab to continue. On the Payroll Info tab, enter the specific payroll earnings for the selected employee. We will discuss entering information into the Payroll, Info, and Workers' Comp tabs in depth in a later chapter on Payroll. If you will be performing payroll activities in QuickBooks, you should review the entire chapter on Payroll before entering employee payroll data. Also note that if you start to create a new employee, 
but don't enter payroll information. You will be prompted by QuickBooks to enter that information when you click the OK button within the new employee window to save the record and close the window. To save the record as is, click the Leave As Is button within the prompt window. To return and enter payroll information immediately, click the Set Up Now button and enter the payroll data. Next, select the Employment Info tab. To the right are three horizontal tabs for Employment, Leave of Absence, and Termination. Select the Employment tab if needed. Here you enter the employee's hire date into the Hire Date field. You can enter the employee's original hire date if needed into the Original Hire Date field. If needed, you can enter an Adjusted Service Date for the employee into the Adjusted Service Date field. An Adjusted Service Date can be used to calculate benefits that differ from the employee's hire date. When the employee leaves, enter their last payroll date into the Release Date, Last Date on Payroll field. Note, however, that this field is automatically filled in when you create a termination check for an employee during payroll. In the Employment Details section, you can use the Employment Type drop-down to classify the employee as a regular W-2 employee, a statutory 1099 employee, or an officer or owner of the company. You can also use the Full, Part-Time, Seasonal, Exempt, and Key Employee drop-downs to select whether the employee is full or part-time, whether or not they are seasonal, whether or not they are exempt, and whether or not they are considered a key employee. In the Job Details section, you can enter job-related details about the employee if desired, including their title, supervisor, department, description, and target bonus. If the employee takes a leave of absence, Click the Leave of Absence tab to enter the information about it. Here you can enter the Start Date, Expected Return Date, and Actual Return Date into the fields in the Leave Dates section to record that information when it occurs. Under the Leave Details section, use the Type and Reason fields to record the type of leave of absence and the reason for it. In the Leave Pay section, use the Leave Pay drop-down to select whether or not this is a paid leave. If the employee is terminated, Click the Termination tab to enter the details about the termination. You can enter the last day worked, last day of benefits, and release date last day on payroll into the fields provided. In the Termination Details section, you can enter the type of termination and the reason for it into the Termination Type and Termination Reason fields. You can use the Recommend Rehire drop-down to select whether or not to recommend the employee for rehiring if possible. You can also use the Protest Unemployment drop-down to choose whether or not to protest the employee's unemployment filing if filed. In the Severance Pay section, you can use the Severance Pay drop-down to indicate whether or not the employee receives severance pay. You can enter any notes about the severance pay into the field below this drop-down. You can click the Workers' Comp tab to enter workers' compensation rates into the fields within this tab. Once again, please review the Payroll chapter to learn how to enter information in this tab in detail. After you have entered the employee information, click the OK button within the new employee window to add the selected employee into the employees list within the employee center. To edit an employee record in the future, to change employee or payroll information, select the name of the employee to edit from the employees tab in the employee center. Then either click the edit button to the right of the employee information section to the right of the list, or double click the name of the employee shown in the employees tab to open the Edit Employee window. Change or add whatever employee or payroll information is necessary through the tabs within this window. Then be sure to click the OK button when finished to save the data entry. Like all the other QuickBooks lists, you cannot delete an entry made in the Employees list once it has been used in a transaction. Once a record is associated with a transaction, you can only inactivate the record to hide it from view. You should review Lesson 3.8 on inactivating and reactivating list items to learn how to perform this task in your QuickBooks lists. However, if you created an employee record but did not use it in any transactions, you can delete the record from the Employee tab. To do this, select the record to delete from the Employees list, and then choose Edit, Delete Employee from the menu bar. You then need to click OK in the confirmation message box that appears to permanently delete the selected employee record. Remember to click the subscribe button to see more of our videos. See our full suite of courses, instruction manuals, and quick reference guides at www.teachucomp.com.